TP Link just sent over this brand new ER8411 VPN router. It's one of the newer ones in the Amada lineup. And this thing looks like an absolute beast on the spec sheet. We'll cover some of the more important things uh, in this video, but we're not going to get into the finer specifics of this router. Just the main highlights, I guess. So first off, let's go ahead and just start with the unboxing because you guys have to see everything that this thing comes with, of course, because it is important to know what you're getting into. So in the box, we of course have the different pamphlets. That's a license and more information about TP-Link products and an installation guide, which we're not gonna use. Uh, we have, of course, the router itself, but let's just go ahead and get the accessories box opened up here. So we have our um, console cable that we can use to connect to the router itself. So if we need to reset it, we can use this. We got some feet for the desk. If you want to set this on the desk, keep uh, keep it from vibrating all over the place. So that's nice to see. Ears, if you want to rack mount it, which we're definitely going to use. Two power cables, which is awesome. These are going to come in handy in the future. And then of course the VPN router itself. This thing's pretty heavy or surprisingly heavy. Let's get all this moved out of the way. All right, simple packaging, can't complain. Bag is recyclable, always a huge plus. There it is. How awesome is that? <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta open this thing up to see what makes it so heavy on the inside. I mean, it's like, it's pretty heavy. Before we open it though, I do wanna go over what all the ports are on the front because this is very important. So let's quickly get through this. Starting from the far left, we have two USB 3.0 ports that can be used for LTE connections. So that's a backup LTE connection. And then we have one SFP 10 gigabit port for your WAN, an optional second SFP plus port that can be used for the WAN as well. That's a 10 gig capable port. Then the third port we have is an SFP port that's one gig capable. And that is also capable of being your WAN port if you need. And then the last eight ports are all one gigabit ethernet ports uh, that do up to 1000 1000 megabits per second. Those can all be, of course, configured to be WAN or LAN ports, uh, whatever you so choose. So pretty good options here on the front. Lots of flexibility, especially if you have a um, like a single system or server that you want to connect to this 10 gig SFP plus port. You can do that right out of the box. You don't need an external switch or an extra switch. So it's pretty cool that you can do that. And these two front ports can also be aggregated together, giving you up to 20 gigabits um, there. So that's also really neat. On the back, not much to see here, but of course, one of the cool things to see on the rear is dual power supplies. That's right. They, out of the box, give you two PSUs, which is really cool. All right, now that we've pretty much gone over the exterior options for this thing, let's crack it open and see what's on the inside. So to open this, it looks like there's only six screws that you need to remove the lid. So let's get those removed really quickly. This unit is absolutely gonna be jacked. It's got a quad core CPU that goes up to 2.2 gigahertz, which is great. So if you need a lot of bandwidth, you have it available, especially for your VPN connections. Uh, that's really where it's gonna shine here, especially if you're using something lightweight like L2TP. That'll be great. Of course, it, with, it does have redundant power supplies, which we're gonna take a look at. It also has flash storage, four megabytes of SPI NOR. Uh, honestly, I don't know what exactly that means, but it's got it. It's got 256 megabytes of NAND flash on board, uh, which is really cool. And also has DDR4, four gigabytes of RAM. How legit is that? After we get this thing taken apart and reassembled, we will, of course, try and hear how loud it can be or will be. All right, big reveal time. Let's get this thing opened up. Oh my gosh, it's actually really pretty on the inside. Damn, TP-Link, y'all knew I was gonna open this and really upgraded, or really stepped up what y'all were gonna do. I know it. Oh my gosh, it's got that lovely fresh electronic smell too. Oh wow, it's like a brand new car almost. Ah, so good. I wish you guys could be here smelling this today. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this. I don't want to be smelling this thing all day. Damn, this looks so good. This is like Apple quality or Apple design right here. That PCB color is so nice. This whole board looks so pretty. 
Right here is the quad core processor, more than likely. Not sure what's sitting under these two heat sinks. We could take some guesses, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. This is probably RAM. Let's get a close up of those chips, just in case somebody wants to serve this, service this in the future. Not sure if we can get that text to um, focus in. All right, let's take a, another look at some other chips on here. Upside down, of course. Looks really good. Um, of course, as per usual, it looks like these are user serviceable. So if you find these fans are too loud for any reason, uh, you can definitely unplug the uh, unplug them and replace them with something more quieter, maybe an Octua. They are glued down, of course, but these are not PWM fans. They only have three pins on the headers. Moving on towards the power supply, uh, this looks like pretty good quality stuff. Those capacitors are thick, y'all. I mean, super thick. Look at that. All right. Try to get some more stable shots on these part numbers, just in case somebody wants to try and service this in the future. Looks good. Uh, the power supplies are unprotected, which is a little unusual for TP-Link. They usually have like a flap or something that goes over these. I'm not sure why they didn't do that this time. Not too big of a deal, just be careful. If you don't know what you're doing, just don't touch it at all. Like me, I would definitely shock myself. Let's get this thing put back together, hopefully really quickly and we'll uh, do a noise test. We'll see how many, how much, how many decibels this thing emits when it's powered on. Um, and hopefully we'll get a good, a good understanding of how, just how loud it is. So those of you that are a little bit more sensitive uh, to the fan noise, uh, we'll have an idea of what to expect. Of course, it won't be under load for the test, but um, I don't know, it should be, somewhat realistic anyway. Now for our totally non-scientific sound test, I am gonna plug in both power cables and I have suspended the device so there's not as much noise bouncing off of the desk. And we'll get this thing plugged in in power port one, which is on y'all's left, or uh, if you're looking at the device, the far left, and then power port two. So uh, assuming power port two is actually the backup one, but we're gonna plug them in or we're gonna plug both of them in just in case because sometimes when you don't plug in both, these things tend to be louder than they would normally be. We are about four feet away and the noise floor of this room is about... ...25 decibels. All right, let's get this thing turned on and see how loud it is. Plugging in at three, two, one. One thing I've seen with these TP-Link switches is when nothing's plugged into it, they tend to be dead silent. And usually when you plug anything into it, they start the fans will spin up. So I'm gonna plug in my laptop here into one of the, or the last WAN port, see if that gets the system going at all. And if it doesn't, then we're gonna try and configure it. I'm basically just gonna access the landing page and see if that does anything. It's still absolutely silent, so. I'm on the landing page. It's prompting me for the username and password. A few moments later. Still nothing, still absolutely quiet. More moments later. I'm oh, still silent. Okay, let's plug something in. Maybe we'll learn something. Uh. We'll plug in this access point. This doesn't have PoE, so. Um, have my little adapter here. I don't know if you guys can even see this. That plugged in, the LAN port plugged in, this plugged into the switch. Still nothing. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just gonna say you're, I don't have a ton of devices that I can just keep plugging into this thing on hand without making a huge mess, and I don't feel like making a huge mess, but it, um, there's two devices. Normally you plug one thing into it, it makes noise, and I'm looking at the configuration page, and nothing. So 
this might be a quiet switch. We're going to have to tackle this one a little bit later in the video or maybe in a different video. I don't, I don't know. All right, let's, um, let's get everything unplugged and just see how much power this thing uses while it idles. So we'll start that test and then we'll check back in in a few hours. Many unbearable hours later. So it's actually been a few hours and this thing is using 0.28 kilowatts per hour. I think the reflection's killing the kilowatt hour there. So 0.28's not bad here in Alabama. Electricity costs about 13 cents. So this has been running for 27 hours and uh, that's voltage. So this costing this thing at idle on configure is costing us 0 0.03 cents to run, uh, which is pretty crazy. And then if we were to run this, oops, I think that was for a full year. No, that's the rate. That's our, that's our rate. So yeah, uh, it seems like it's pretty efficient, which is great to see, but you know, it's really hard to tell how much power this thing is going to use. However, TP-Link does tell us how much power in their lab testing that they anticipate this switch to use. Which according to them, if you have two USB 3.0 devices connected, it will use a maximum power consumption of 26.36 watts. And if there are no USB devices connected to it, only 19.12 watts. That's pretty good for max power consumption. So that thing, so this thing's pretty efficient and I'm really curious to know what will get these fans to kick on. Now it's just sitting here, it's kind of warm to the touch, nothing I would say that's hot, but you can definitely tell this thing has been running. Again, it's not hot, it just has some heat to it, like an engine that's had some time to cool down and you're just checking to see if it's been on within the last hour or so. So, great job TP-Link. One thing I definitely wanna try out for this video is testing these SFP Plus to Ethernet modules from FS. We're gonna get one connected to the WAN port to our modem and the other one connected uh, to a computer. So let's go get this thing on the rack and uh, I guess just do a simple speed test, nothing too fancy. We've got everything plugged in. Let's see how this multi-gig works out. And yes, these SFP Plus ports are multi-gig. So you can do 10, 5, 2.5 and 1G on these. All right, what's really cool about this is that I'm able actually to get to like 1.5, 1.1 gigabit per second. Actually. Uh, hit 1.4 just before recording this and um, I have I pay for AT&T fiber internet which is up to one gig up so sometimes I'm able to actually get over these speeds but for some reason my upload speed is being terrible right now only at 400 megabits per second that's probably an AT&T thing not so much as hardware I'm very very confident the hardware is able to do more than um, uh, gigabit speeds. I learned a couple interesting interesting things about the switch. While it does support multi-gig uh, setups, like, you know, like 2.5 gigabit ethernet or five gigabit ethernet, for some reason in the actual software, you can't change, uh, like the drop-down menu for auto negotiation is stuck at 10,000 megabits or 1,000 megabits. It doesn't let you actually choose anything in the middle. And also for some reason, my FS SFP plus modules are not compatible with the switch. So I ended up having to use my WeTech ones, which then allowed me to use uh, 2.5 gigabit or even five gigabit ethernet. I could not use the FS modules for 2.5 or five gigabit ethernet. It would just straight up not connect and I'd have issues there. So I'm gonna leave a link in the video description for these WeTech ones. I'm wondering if a firmware update will fix this or fix the issues with the FS ones in the future. I'm gonna try and reach out to FS and see if they have models that are specifically compatible with Omada, much like the Ubiquiti ones that they make. And maybe that will resolve some issues, but that will be for a video another day. TP-Link is making my job a little bit harder trying to actually give you guys valuable metrics of this thing. And as much as I'd like to, like to read the spec pages off to you, honestly, you can go see all that for yourself with a quick Google search. But this thing seems to be pretty powerful. Um, even with the concurrent VPN sessions, it'll do something like 500 megabits per, I'm sorry, 5,000 megabits per second or something crazy like that with an L2TP VPN connection. Um, but anyway, you'll definitely wanna go check out all the specs because this thing seems pretty boss. And with that being said, if you guys keep watching, this thing is going to pretty much be the forefront of the SPX Labs home network or home lab from this day forward. So there'll be more to come about this 
and a bunch of other equipment here come or here in the future. So definitely stay tuned if you're interested in seeing more about this product because we'll actually be connecting SFP modules to it. We'll be putting it through its paces with some benchmarks. Well, maybe not some benchmarks, but running some speed tests to figure out what kind of bandwidth we could expect out of this and such, which I'm sure we'll be able to see 10 gigabit. But still, we have to do it. And I'd love to do it for this video, but unfortunately, we're just not going to be able to because there's so much more content that's going to be coming in the future with this and more. So with all that being said and that big disappointment, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching and thank you TP-Link for sending this out to me. And I hope to see all of you next time. Peace.